Hey guys, thought I should do a review about the uh, movie I just I saw last Tuesday, but I just didn't feel like doing a review for it. Was um, the Murder on the Orient Express? Now this is based off of a book by Agatha Christie, if I'm correct, and she wrote it in the '60s. And there was a movie about it in the '70s, which apparently is one of the best movies of that decade. So I knew a lot of people were kind of very hesitant about it because it's a cult, it's a, not a cult classic, it is a classic. However, when I saw that Kenneth Brennan was attached to it as the director, I was thinking, okay, this guy is perfect. He is the master of stage theater. He's probably the best Shakespeare movie maker of all time. And he's always great, especially to be in films because he can always add, while he does... Uh, he makes good movies, it really makes you think it's a theatrical sense. You felt that throughout Thor, the first movie. You felt like you were watching a stage play. And what was hilarious is there's a joke about it in the third one. Anyways, he's in it as well. And I'll admit, the first ten minutes is really hard to get through because of his accent. He's in the mustache. And it's, it's to the character from what I've seen. And it's ridiculous. And the accent is ridiculous. And the character is ridiculous. But eventually, you get on board with it because the story gets rolling. Once you get on the train, that's when everything starts rolling and everything starts to really work. The first 15 minutes is, I'd almost say cringeworthy, just because you're getting into the mindset of Kenneth Branagh's movies. And you have to do that with his films. It's, it's something you always have to get through. Like I said, the beginning of Thor. The fact that Thor starts with the fight scene, the first film, that helped it a little bit. So once we get on the train, then the interesting stuff starts. We actually get a lot of really cool characters. We got a really a lot of cool twists and turns, and everyone does really well for the character. Again, a little over dramatized, but that's because it's Kenneth Branagh. And he does theater in a movie. The film is incredibly well shot for being such in a tight, cramped space. There's a lot of really cool shots where they will follow the people outside of the train, and then as they walk in the train, the camera is still outside and following them back in. It's awesome, and I really, really enjoy that aspect of the film. And there's even a scene when the murder happens, the camera is above them, and it's like watching them go down into the room, back out. You actually don't even see the body for the first 20 minutes, which again, really cool at building the suspense and building the mystery of the film. And every time I thought I knew who it was, I haven't seen the original, I haven't read the book, so I was watching this from a clear mind. I, every time I thought I thought I knew who it was, I was always tricked, I was always misled, and it's really cool to seeing into the different characters. There's only two moments I'll say that after they get on the train, there's severely bad acting. Um, the first part is the dancer where Kenneth Bryan's in there and he's trying to talk to his wife and he just slams his hand on the ground like, my God, sir! It's just, it's terrible. It's really, really bad. And Kenneth Bryan actually himself has a moment. At the very end, when everything comes down, where all the cards are laid down, you find out what actually happened. At first, you're like, wow, that's actually kind of an interesting twist. Actually, I again, you will not, unless you've seen it or read it, you won't expect the ending. I'll, it's a guaranteed you won't expect it. Or if you do, you have some inclination. But anyways, once it's all revealed, Kenneth Branding, <laughs> this, it comes to this very dramatic moment. He's like, do it! And it's, again, the mustache, the, the accent, it's, I, I laughed. I started laughing really loudly at that point. It's supposed to be a very dramatic and emotional scene. But then it comes to... and then But the problem is, in realistic terms, when you think about the twist, it doesn't make any fucking sense in terms of just how that would work considering Brannon's character is in the next room and you can see that he's having issues sleeping. But otherwise, I enjoy this movie. I think everyone does a really good job. Again, it's a very dramatic movie. It's like watching a theater play on screen. However, it's extremely well shot. The music is very cool. Everyone does a good performance, albeit theatrical. And I actually wouldn't mind if they did continue because they do hint at another case that his character would go on to, if I'm correct, if there was other books, something about Nile or anything. So I do like this film. Again, it's not 
uh, it's not perfect. A lot of people will probably not be able to take this seriously because of just the how everything plays out, how everyone is very thematic, very dramatic, but it fits to what the film is. It's, uh, from what I've heard, pretty honest to the original film. It's very well shot, and I think it's an enjoyable movie. I wouldn't say it's like, oh my god, you have to see it, but it definitely was enjoyable. So in the end, I will give The Murder on the Orient Express a 5 out of 7. It's a good movie, but if you can't take the first, if you're not able to withstand the first 25 minutes of the movie, then I understand. Like I said, that first 10 minutes, it's hard. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review, guys, and I will be reviewing uh, Supernatural soon. Talk to you guys later.